I have a love-hate relationship with firewood. And I'll share with you why I love it a little bit later in the video, and I hope you stick around for that because I feel it's important. But for now, I want to talk about why I kind of hate it. What you are watching occurs about every two weeks in the early winter and early spring. I run out of firewood. I haven't got enough cut yet to last me through the winter, and it seems like I really struggle to get ahead in those months leading up to my first fire in late September or early October. You see, we heat nearly 7,000 square feet with our outdoor wood boiler. Yeah. We heat our remodeled farmhouse, a three-car garage, and my 36 by 56 workshop. It's a lot to heat with one unit. This is my 20th year cutting firewood for the home that we live in now, and it's actually my 14th season with that wood boiler. And yes, she is a hungry girl. I've never been quite able to figure out how many cords of wood I go through in a year because a lot of times I'm burning it as I'm making it, so it's hard to keep track. But what I do know is I keep a fire going for oftentimes seven months out of the year from October to May, which means I spend a good majority of the weekends of the year handling and messing with firewood. So that's sometimes why I kind of hate firewood because you, it's easy to feel like the stove dictates what you'll be doing for so many of those weekends. But for this video, I wanna share my five best firewood making tips if you hope to heat with a wood boiler. I'm gonna share these tips while I cut a quick load of wood to get me through the week. So hopefully you'll follow along. The first tip, is what you're seeing now, and that is a place to store your processed firewood near your boiler. Ideally, you would have a roof overhead to keep things somewhat dry from rain, but more importantly, to keep the snow off of it as much as possible. Also, the way I have this built, I can fill the stove in the rain or when it's snowing, and I can stay mostly dry. Probably the best feature of this area is the concrete floor. The concrete is easy to keep clean, and you can even use the bucket of a tractor or skid loader to scrape up all the bark and debris that tends to get really deep over time. The concrete was a bit of an initial investment, but it's one of the best things I've done in terms of making life easier when it comes to the daily routine of feeding the stove and handling the wood nearby it. Tip number two is you should provide a place for others to bring you free firewood. And this would also double as your spot to dump wood where you can do your processing before it goes to the final stack close to your stove. For me, that was this big old concrete pad that used to be from a grain bin on our property. People in the area, mostly family and friends, know that I cut firewood and whenever they have a tree to cut down and they need a place to bring it, guess what? They bring it and dump it right here. It's a win-win situation. They get to get rid of it, I get free wood, and I can usually cut it the way I want or if they've cut it in an odd way, it doesn't matter because it's going in that wood boiler. Actually, in today's situation, I'll be cutting up some logs that were dumped on my concrete pad by my father-in-law from a recent land clearing project that he was working on. So that was great, but which also leads me to my next tip. Tip number three is family involvement. If you wanna heat a large area with a boiler, I have found that the help of family and friends has been one of the most important parts to our success here. I grew up helping my dad and uncle cut firewood, and as luck would have it, my wife grew up with her dad cutting and heating their home with wood. So now my dad, my uncle Kenny, my father-in-law Rick, and a handful of other close friends and family, they all help out and make it possible for us to be able to do this and, and heat our home the way we have. So now I have twin daughters and they've reached the ripe old age of nine. So it's time we put a chainsaw in their hand and put them to work. I've got my chainsaw and I'm all ready. Girls, are you ready? Mommy? Ready. Eva? Ready. Ella? We'll find, you, we'll find you a smaller saw. Tip number four is probably the most fun, and that's equipment. 
Now, obviously this can evolve over time, but to start out, you're gonna need the basics of at least a chainsaw, a wood splitting device of some sort, and a pickup truck or a good trailer. But then over time, the overall goal is to step up your equipment game. Why else would you be saving money by burning firewood if you can't justify that compact tractor or that one ton dump truck or that fancy wood splitter? If you do this long enough, your wife will get used to you wanting to buy stuff in the name of making firewood. Now, just ignore the fact the investment you've made in saws and splitters and tractors and trucks and the stove itself could have bought you 99 years worth of propane to heat the place and just enjoy the fact that you've had the opportunity to acquire all this equipment and make good use of it to heat your home. Plus you can use it in the off season for other stuff. Well, I pushed the logs out of the way to make room for the trailer. And originally I thought that I would hold the logs up with the backhoe and the thumb because sometimes I do that. I hold them up and I cut them. But I realized I'm going to be jumping in and out a lot. And it looks like the rest of my help abandoned me because I took too long to set stuff up. So I'm by myself right now. I'm just going to cut on the pile and then pick them up off of the ground and throw them in the trailer. And then we'll park the trailer in front of the stove. So I like wearing these earbuds. They act like earplugs. Then I can listen to music. I like Boston radio on Pandora. Full classic rock guy. My fifth and final tip is dedication. If you got all the hardware and equipment and all the help you could use, like I've mentioned previously, then you can make firewood. That's actually the easy part. Now the tough part is the mental component. If you're gonna have a wood boiler and you want to heat a large amount of space, you've got to have the dedication to stick with it. You have to have a good source of wood, which fortunately I have a terrific network for acquiring wood and logs, and that's never been a problem. You need to be willing to spend your weekends messing with firewood and the chore of cutting and splitting and hauling and stacking. There's gonna be weekends and Saturdays where you say, I gotta go cut wood for us to have heat. You're also gonna to need to make time in your daily routine to keep that wood boiler fed. All throughout the year, I visit the stove at least twice a day to keep it going so it won't burn out. And in the coldest months of the year, I usually visit the stove three times a day. You're gonna smell like smoke and people are gonna tell you that you smell like smoke. And that's just part of the game and the lifestyle that is heating with firewood. So if you think you can check yes to all these tips, then you are likely a good candidate for heating your home or shop with an outdoor wood boiler. But at the beginning of this video, I told you I had a love-hate relationship with firewood, and I haven't really mentioned anything about why I love it yet, other than the acquisition of really cool equipment and toys. The secret to loving it actually lies in tip number three, and that's family involvement. I'm reminded of it even more today in this video because I happen to be cutting by myself, but by far the best part of heating our homestead with firewood has been the ability to spend time creating memories with family and friends all throughout the years under the excuse of needing to cut wood. Not to mention all the exercise and physical reward and fulfillment you get from doing it. That's good too. But I've spent countless hours with the people that are very important to me as a result of needing to make wood. All throughout every stage of my life. As a kid growing up, it meant time with my grandpa, my dad, my brothers, my uncles, and my cousins. We were learning the meaning of hard work and truly understanding why they say firewood 
heat you twice, if not three times. As a young adult moving into a, my first home that had a wood burner in the kitchen, it meant spending time on the weekends with my friends, Ryan and Jack and Clint, and all the others that helped out to make wood, to both use and sell at that time. And now in middle age, I continue to have an excuse to call my dad and my father-in-law, and I ask them what they have planned for a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, and from the impression I get, they're always pretty eager to get that call. And as time ticks on, I get to move into the next phase where I get my kids involved. And they get to help out alongside their dad and their grandpa, and their mom, their uncle, whoever it may be that's helping out at the time. They'll get to learn some of those lessons that I learned as a kid and I've held so valuable to me throughout my entire life. As any of you know that cut firewood, it's as much about the experience as it is about the actual physical process. I'd love to hear about your firewood making memories and stories as a kid or as an adult, so don't be shy and leave them in the comments down below. So I had this clip that I shot earlier this summer and I never had a good place to put it into any video, but I thought this was a fitting spot because I've been talking about family and firewood and the memories that you can make associated with it. Well, this was a memory that we accidentally made while we were unloading the trailer earlier this summer, so. Possums are big rats. So, uh, seems like we got a little friend here in our wood. Yes, oh, so cute. Cute. You're excited. You're excited. Can I see that? How are you over there? <laughs> he looks like a big rat. Mommy, a big rat. Stop. What if he has babies? Let's see oh. this big rat. Move that board, Eva. Just be careful he doesn't get you. Oh. Oh, it's a little he's possum. A he's a baby. There's probably more in here. He got his tail. That's rude. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's just a little baby. Can I hold him? No. He's a marsupial. Okay, little guy. So. T uh, possums do lots and lots of good things, right? So we're not going to hurt Mr. Possum. See, Mommy. Mommy. Uh -huh. He's probably got more relatives in here, though, would be my guess. Yes! Do ya? Uh -huh. We're going to set him loose out here in the field. They're usually pretty docile. Is he playing dead? Is he scared? He's kind of halfway he's playing dead. He doesn't know what to do. He's nervous. As long as you hold him by the nap of their neck, like a cat, then they won't get too carried away. So you're going to take him to the field? I'll take him to the field. Now they got sharp teeth, so you want to... Just because he's being a little calm right now doesn't mean you want to take him for granted, okay? Alright, little guy. You go. Be on your way. <laughs> So their natural response is to play dead, so he doesn't, he's just playing dead. I know how they play dead. Why is there like water coming out of his mouth? He's drooling a little. Is that normal? Well, I'm not exactly a veterinarian, I don't know. <laughs> he's playing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it. I'm not going to soon forget that experience, and hopefully the girls won't forget it either. It was a fun day, and we got to watch Mommy stand on a ladder because she was afraid of a possum. But hey, I want to thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something useful from it, or you're at least entertained by it. That's going to do it for me today. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Co dig, dry, DIY. Mommy? Ready. Eva? Ready. Ella? Ready. Come on. Ready. I can't do it. Uh. <laughs>